What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about intermittent fasting again. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a new study came out on intermittent fasting versus just regular continuous meal feeding. This one is different than some of the other ones because they actually equated calories in this study. Oh, I know! Like everybody sends me these studies and they're like, look, intermittent fasting caused more weight loss. And I'm like, they just let them do whatever. There was no intervention. Like, well, I mean, they, they spontaneously ate less calories, which may be a benefit for some people of intermittent fasting, but in this study, they wanted to look mechanistically. Does intermittent fasting, or they called it time-restricted eating, cause more weight loss when compared with continuous meal feeding when people eat the same amount of calories, same macros, and same micros? Okay, so this was a controlled feeding study where all of the meals were provided to participants and their adherence levels were like, I think it was like 98% or something like that, like very, very good adherence. You do not hear about adherence being high in nutritional studies like this. So this was a 12 week study where they matched calories, they matched macros, and they matched micronutrients. So they were literally eating the same diets, the only difference was the timing. Now how did the timing work? They instructed the people in the intermittent fasting group to eat their food in a 10 hour feeding window. You know the intermittent fasters are gonna come on, there wasn't a long enough feeding window, it's gotta be at least, eight. it's gotta be maximum of eight hours. Well, on average, when they did the, the actual analysis, it was like 8.8 .8 hours was the average window. And they were instructed to consume 80% of their calories before 1 p.m., I believe. They're getting 80% way early in the day. I think 40% at breakfast, 40% at lunch. Then like 20% at dinner, and they left a, like a flex 5%. If they didn't have it at another meal, they could have like 5% snack somewhere else. In effect, they were doing early time-restricted eating, which based on some of the non-controlled feeding studies, early time-restricted eating seemed to be the best form of intermittent fasting. So the non-intermittent fasting group, or I forget what, they, I think they called it the UEP group. They were instructed to eat the majority of their calories later in the day, after 5 p.m. They were instructed to keep all their calories between 8 a.m. and midnight, right? So we've got one group that's putting the vast majority of their calories early in the day, right? They're having a, a very long time from 1 p.m. till 8 a.m. the next day with a very low amount of calories. The other group is eating them mostly later in the day. So this, by comparison, by what the big intermittent fasting zealots say, this should be like the biggest difference we would see. And what did they find? Well, they found no differences in weight loss. In fact, in the raw numbers, the UEP group actually lost uh, 0.3 kilograms more than the group doing intermittent fasting. Now what was interesting was they had these people wear accelerometers. They found that the fasting group or the time-restricted eating group actually spontaneously decreased their physical activity. The group that was the UEP group or the regular group did not decrease their physical activity. So that might explain that small non-significant difference in weight loss because they were eating the exact same calories. So how did they all lose the exact same amount of weight? Well, again, you can never have everything perfect and that decline in activity may explain that. So that is one thing to consider. Now this is the first study that I know of that has shown a spontaneous decline in physical activity from intermittent fasting, but they were using very sensitive accelerometers. So it's something worth keeping an eye on. Now when it came to measures of glucose homeostasis, they measured HOMA IR, fasting glucose, they did an oral glucose tolerance test, and they measured glycosylated albumin. And this was interesting. They actually were supposed to measure glycosylated hemoglobin, which is HbA1c, which is kind of the gold standard for long-term blood sugar regulation. And I guess what happened was there was an error and the, they didn't take whole blood and you need whole blood in order to get glycosylated hemoglobin. And so they didn't have that, but they had albumin and glycosylated albumin is still another measure of long-term blood sugar regulation. So they used that in place of glycosylated hemoglobin. What they found with all these measures was there wasn't really a difference between the groups at the end. You saw a time difference in some. So what you saw was fasting blood glucose and HOMA IR dropped a little bit in the time-restricted eating group, whereas it didn't really drop in the continuous group. But glycosylated albumin dropped a little bit in the continuous group and didn't really drop in 
the time-restricted eating group. There was no differences between the groups at the end, so basically there was no difference between the groups. Both diets were equally effective. Now the other thing to point out about this study was it was in obese people who had compromised glucose metabolism. Now I think that's a strength of the study because a lot of the people who have promoted time-restricted eating have said, you know, people who are insulin resistant, this is even more important for them to keep their insulin down throughout the day as much as possible. And as I have said repeatedly, I don't think it's gonna make a difference in long-term blood glucose because if you're eating more at one time, sure, you may have longer periods of time where you're not eating where insulin's low, but if you're eating more at another time, that is gonna create a higher area under the curve of insulin. And if you're more spreading your food out over time, that might create more insulin responses, but on the whole, the area under the curve is probably gonna be the same. And this is what we're starting to see with these studies that actually, like there was one we just covered a few weeks back that looked at uh, continuous glucose monitoring and found like actually like no difference between time-restricted eating versus continuous feeding. I just don't think this stuff makes a difference long-term. Now, am I saying that intermittent fasting is bull No, I'm not saying it's bull in studies where they counsel people and have them do free living, what they see is people who do intermittent fasting tend to spontaneously decrease their calorie intake. And so they lose weight, they lose some fat, but it's not because of fasting or insulin or anything like that, it's because they're eating less calories. So if you're someone who finds that intermittent fasting is easy for your lifestyle and you, can, you feel satiated and you can eat less calories and your goal is to lose weight, it is a great tool to help you lose weight, but it's not magic. Sorry, Jason Fung. That's why my app, Carbon Diet Coach, doesn't pigeonhole you into any one way of eating because we know that the most important thing is adherence. And adherence is not really different in the long term across various different diets. So adherence should be determined by what you, the individual, find the easiest to do. What do you find easiest to stick to? Time-restricted eating? Cool. We don't make you eat five meals per day. Is it low-carb? Cool. We have that option. Ketogenic? We have that option. Balanced? We have that option. Low-fat? We have that option. Plant-based? We have that option. We are diet agnostic because we know that getting you on the program you can be consistent with is going to be the biggest determinant towards your success. And carbon takes all the messy guesswork out of, oh, how much do I eat? Uh, do I, should I lower my numbers? Should I raise my numbers? Carbon takes care of all that through our advanced algorithm that determines based on your progression, what to do with your calories and macros. So you guys can click the link in the description. We have carbon available on iOS and Android. We have tens of thousands of satisfied users. So make sure you download and subscribe today and I will catch you guys next week.